Hello folks, this is Scott Grove of GroovyMusicLessons.com I have been asked today to take my uh, classic intros and outros and turnarounds intros meaning the little licks that get you into a song like you would actually count like one, two a one, two <laughs> which are basically the same thing, but they end a song. So you're getting at the end of a song. And turnarounds. Okay, so you're... Um, so something that just kind of happens in the middle of more traditional songs but to take all of these things and make them very basic okay so old style country and not a lot of fancy stuff going on so to make them as simple as possible for those beginners out there um, again it's the beginners who need the most help so for those of you who are just uh, basic rhythm players and are wanting to get into lead guitar uh, this will be a good way for you to do it okay so we'll start stretching and bending strings right away but we'll do it at such an easy pace that you can get used to it um, again um, for those of you who've been playing acoustic forever it's time to grab an electric and realize that you're going to have to go some lighter gauge strings and in order to bend those strings correctly um, in country music, until you get used to it, I would strongly suggest just using 9 gauge strings, 9 through 42. And in about 10 years, if you want to go to heavier strings, for some reason, which I never have in the 40... God, have I been playing that long? Yep. Uh, well, I've been playing 39 years. I've always stayed with 9 gauge strings, so um, they'll serve you just fine. So let's do some very basic stuff get you in, around, and out of uh, very basic country western patterns. That's the one thing that's missing out of uh, music today is western. You know, we barely have any country left, so uh, let alone western. The western died out a long time ago. Too bad, but it did. So let's get down here to the pretty guitar. Today's guitar uh, being the Merle Haggard Tough Dog Signature Telecaster. Uh, these are ones that everybody got the little Chihuahua on there. <laughs> Pretty guitar though, huh? I love this thing. It's just a beautiful guitar. And, um, boy, you just can't beat her. If you're playing country music, there's got to be a telly somewhere in the band. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is do very basic intro. And this will also be a turnaround, meaning it can be used. And this could also be an outro. It could be used as all three. Um, you'll hear it. You'll know it. Because it's been used in so many songs. And it's just so basic and so simple that um, you can use it everywhere. And what's cool about this is I'll show you how to use it in a few different keys also. And then you can put them in every single key you want to. I'll show you how to put this in all the different keys because I'm going to play it in E where you're going to have just that you know open string and but you know you know you could do it in A but what if you want to do it in another key that has like a G in there okay so that's not the lick but just to show you that I will show you other places for us to play it in. Now let's get this thing down here. We can actually see some more of the guitar. Alrighty. Now for this first intro, I'm going to do the very simple. Okay, you've heard that a million times. Now it's time to play it. Okay. So I'm not going to use a count off yet. I will just show you the 
lick, as it is called. Which is what we're going to do first. Okay, so we'll be going to, I'm going to name the strings um, being the sixth string, fifth, fourth, third, instead of saying E string, A string, all that. And then I will also say the number of the fret. Instead of just going second fret, fourth fret, I'll just say two. I'll say go to your second string, do two, four. That means two, four means. Okay, so it will kind of save us some time. So you'll get used to this um, as we go, I'm sure. Okay, so again, I'll name the string first. Like I'll say five. So we're on fifth string. Or I'll just say fifth string. Um, two, four. That means you play the second fret, fourth fret. And if you need to look at which finger I'm using, that's why you have video. Okay, so use your rewind button. And if you need to see which fingers I'm using, it's a lot quicker than me having to explain the string name, the fret number, uh, the finger number, which kind of fingernail polish I'm using, which gauge of pick I'm using, you know, over and over and over again. Okay, so again, the lick will sound like... <laughs> heard it probably on a lot of Hank Williams, Junior stuff, Waylon stuff, all the outlaw stuff and even before that they had to get it from somebody. Okay so we'll go that much. Okay so we're going fifth string, two, okay second fret, two times so far. Okay now the third time you hit it, so you're going to do it three times, but it's going to go Okay, now that's phrasing. Phrasing means how you talk. Otherwise it would be phrasing is how you talk. <laughs> so, phrasing is how you talk. You got to break it up. Otherwise it's like you're singing okay so it's going to be three times total here on this B note so again string number five fret two okay twice then on the third time you're going to do a hammer on to the fourth fret if you're not familiar with the term you're actually doing exactly that you're taking that for third finger and actually hammering it on there just like it's a hammer okay and put hitting down on it enough so it still rings okay so one two again hammer on now four meaning fourth string fret two Okay. Now back to five and four. Fifth string, fourth fret. Okay. Okay, now let's get your phrasing proper. Okay, now we're going to cut that last one off on fret four. Okay, listen to the phrasing. So you've got the first two chopped off, which is called staccato when you chop it off real fast, if you ever want to know that word. Then the third time, hammer on. So when you come back to fret number four here, it's really staccato, chop it off. 
Okay? Now if we were to actually count it, it would be like one, a two, a one, two. Okay? My fault? Two. A one, two. Okay? So it actually kicks in that way. It's, it's weird to count something yourself. So if a drummer was actually to count, you would have to start the song. He would be, the drummer would say, a one, a two, a one, two. Then you would have to do these lead-in notes. Okay? So that would be your thing. So you have to do, they're actually called pickup notes, which is nice for country music. You got pickup notes or the lead-in notes. But generally, the pickup notes or lead-in lead notes, anything you want to call them is just fine. As long as you keep using the same term all the time so you don't get confused yourself or confuse anybody else that you might be picking with. <laughs> okay? Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do here is a bend. Okay. We're dropping down to string 4, fret 4. And you're bending it down towards the floor. This will be probably one of the harder things that you will have to learn. Generally bends are thought of as going up. Okay, but we are going to be bending down towards the floor, which is very, very, very necessary in country music. Not so much any other style of music, but we have to um, in country music. It's just the way the licks and the guitar itself is designed. Okay, so again. Okay, slower. Two. One, two. You hear all that? That's my finger trying to bend down there <laughs> as the volume dies down. Now what we're trying to do is bend this up a whole step meaning two frets. So go two frets higher and that's the note you're trying to reach. Okay, so that's called a whole step. Half step would be one fret. Okay, so a whole step or across the C, they call it a whole tone. Or here would be a semitone. Or a <laughs> semitone. Okay, so a whole step or a whole tone. So it's about as far down as you can bend it without uh, basically hurting yourself. Honestly, it's right right when your string hits the G string, the next string down. You'll know you have it right when those two strings come together. <laughs> and now when you've got it down there, you're actually going to grab that G string on the fourth fret because you've already got a hold of it. It's there. Because the two strings are touching each other now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so that's what we're going to do is bend it down till it hits that string, then hit the G string or your th third string. And then hit that fourth string again while it's still bent up. This here's called resolve or just letting it um, or releasing it. Please release me. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. And then simply go back to. Um, two, fret number two on the D string. Okay, so we could do those staccato or however you feel. I like doing that. Um, if you get really good with your right hand, you can go. Okay. All kinds of little cool little clicky noises. But let's get the licks first. Everything else will come naturally. Okay, you're still 
in E. Okay, we have not changed chords yet. Now we're gonna do okay, same bend, but do it on string five. Okay, so but on frets four and two, but you start with it. It's what's, what's called a pre-bend. So four and two, but start with a pre-bend, so it's actually like it's up at six. Okay, now we are in B. So we started off. Okay, so we're doing uh, E. B, E, intro. Okay, so again. Okay, I like putting a click in just so you know what's happening. If you say, what was that? Okay, so after the... All I did is click on the D string up, but with nothing on it. I'm just muting it with my hands. I'm not pushing down or anything. I just have my hands shutting it up, just kind of like this. Okay, so after the... And then we go again, okay? After the okay, which is what we already did before. So we're back on string four, fret four. Okay. So we went. string on the fourth string so the second time you do it instead of just resolving it or letting it loose so after you hit it hit that G string but then it's just kind of neat finish it out is by going D string and this is going to be five four three those are your fret numbers A string same thing five four three that's three two open open on string six so you got and that'll be the end of it Okay, so slowly. Slide from five. Okay, I'm on the fourth string. Slide from five, f fret five. But you don't pick it. Five to four. Then you do, you can either pick it, any, any, either up or down, I don't care. 
or you can do what's called a pull off. Now a pull off, if you're not familiar with it, is kind of a strange little thing, which is this. You can see that with this finger, when I go five, slide, now when I pull off, I actually pull down. Okay, so I'm picking it with my pick. That's the only time I pick it with my pick. Now I picked it with my finger by pulling down a little bit. Okay, and the next string, same thing. See? That's called a pull off. You're not just pulling it off, you're pulling it and then you take it off. So you're actually picking it with your other finger. So. Okay, then we got. Okay, so that's what happened with that thing. Okay, I know it's taking me 20 minutes to get here, but it's a very cool lick. Okay, um, and as many times as we need at the end, let's, let's let me figure it out real quick. Okay, so after the... Then, bomb, bomb, if you want to do it that way. You may not want to do it that way. Um, it's up to you. It's just a typical um, way of starting a song and if everybody wants to end there in order to begin <laughs> okay sometimes things do that um, a good woman at home who thinks I do no wrong okay so some songs will start that way but you can put what you want at the end again I used and just kind of stopped it or you can go a real nice way if you're not gonna do any kind of stopping is to go to the second fret and bend it down towards the ground and let it just kind of ring and then you can just let it ring again open because you are in E okay that's it. So that's 151, which uh, if you check out any of my um, theory videos, will tell you what that is. So that's your E, B, E, 2, 1, 2, da, 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 boom, da, 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 boom, da, boom, da, boom, da, boom, da, 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 Okay, so that's just a good way to get her in there. Okay, now from here, let's um, get it just in another key. Okay, you can go back and check that out any old time and see what makes it tick. Okay. So now if we just stick it in A, you would think that everything would be the same, and it is, luckily. <laughs> okay, so if you're going to do A, back to A, so A, E, A intro, so the song's in the key of A now, whatever song that is, and you want to use this same intro. Okay, so you can use this for a lot of songs. Try not to use it for every song because it'll get old. But I'll, over time, teach you enough of these so that you can pick and choose between one of 20 of them and, you know, kick songs off this way or end them this way or whatever. Okay? It's just to get you started. Okay, so if you're doing an A, two, a one, two, but do do look at do 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 one, two. Okay. See. Okay. Okay. Okay, we do 
surprising, one extra surprise here because of how guitars are tuned like this, fifth fret. And I could tell already that was too high. Okay, now you, you know how you tune it on the fourth fret there for the B string. So when we get up to that high note where we did on the before, we went. Like, Instead of where it stops up against it, we don't have the luxury of being able to do that because of the way that B string is tuned. So we have to do the exact same thing except for when we go. reach up with our pinky and we're going to have to use 5th fret on that 2nd string instead of 4th fret on that 3rd string. It's the only difference because of the way the guitar is tuned. We have to do that. So it's, it's quite the stretch and it won't be this way every time but any time that you're starting on the A string instead of starting on the E string it will be that way. Okay, so depending on different things and we'll run through a couple um, they will end up this way so this will be same as the other but okay and you can use the chord or so again, we are now on um, string four. Same as before, just one whole string down because we're in the key of A now. Then we go to E chord. Back to A. Okay. Okay, so get that much and get it phrased right. Bam. And practice getting that pinky stuck in there now. After you get that four note, fret four on the third string, bend up, up to that note. And it sounds kind of nice to let both of them ring. So um, I won't take up too much of your time since this one is the same way, but with the exception of dropping everything down one string and adding that note instead of bending down and hitting it, because it would do this if you were to do it the same way. No good. <laughs> so you have to add. Okay. Okay, now the difference here, I should very well point this out, is we get to bend up this time, we have to. Before... See how we're bending everything down? Now we have to bend up. And the cool thing about that, um, the reason why it happens is because if we bend this down, you're running into the other string way too early because these strings are skinnier and you have to bend them down further to get them to tune right. So by the time it's way down there, it's already slammed into the other string and bent further than it needs to go. Okay, but it's just what happens. But what is cool? When it's time to bend here, when you first started, now when you go here, you've got Go ahead and put two fingers 
I'll get her in here so you can see what I mean, and then we'll skip right on ahead. You got two fingers here on this third string. Use both of them to help you bend up, because this finger may not be real strong to bend up yet. So use both of them to help bend. So this one back here can be a cheater. Help you bend. conversation sake and for your sake in all of these from the beginning to the end so whether it's the first one I showed you the first lick in E or this one in A you can when it's going instead of going you can always do a little bend okay you see that it's a half step so only just like you played it you can always go or okay so you can do whichever one you like you might like this in different keys okay just so you can do them in all keys okay so the first note that your first finger hits um, is going to be the key you're going to be in so if you're like okay I'm going to be in the key of C okay so that's going to mean you're going to need a C and a G and a C to start the beginning of the song because you don't only want to play in E or A. So here's in C. Okay, so we have to go. Okay. Um, let's see what's going to be a better way to get to a C. Okay. Okay, that's gonna be the best way to put it. Is right there in C. Okay, we had A here. So our best C to go to, because um, E is as low as we can go here. Okay, so find out where your best sounding one's gonna be. Um, A was right here. A, A sharp, B, C. So that means since we're gonna have to start here. Okay, because I said wherever our first finger goes, that's the key we're going to be in. So you got to find that note. Okay, so you want to do it in the key of C. Say, okay, that's C, but I have to start right below it or above it, whichever way you're looking at it from. Okay. There's that pinky again because we have to go to that G string and then we run up to anytime we go on that B string we have to use that pinky up there when we bend and we have to bend up because we're going to use the B string 
if we were bending it down, we'd have to be running into the D string or the fourth string. Okay? If that didn't make sense, run it back. <laughs> okay? I like to try to make these lessons an hour long, so I'd try to squeeze as much more in here as I can. Try to get past just this one lick. Okay, so this one, just like the one we did here. <laughs> Like you're starting in A, think about it this way. If you played an A chord with one finger, there's A, A sharp, B, and C. So your D, G, B string, that's a whole C chord. Okay, so we're basing it off this. That's why we start. Because you could actually leave the finger here and go. Okay, so here's where it gets weird. Okay, so again, I'm not going to waste all day. I'm going to go over it about two more times. So you can use the one finger method and go over the D. G, B string, so that it sounds like the C chord, same as, sounds the same, no difference at all, and you know you have the first two notes right, on strings four and three, so I'm bending up. figure out then it's an octave down so you skip a whole fret and skip a whole string from where you started down to C again so you just gotta learn your notes so you're down to C then that will become just like so second nature to you that lick that it'll always just resolve on the C like you need it to or in D move it all up one all right there okay or if you want to take it all the way up to F a matter of where you what key you want to be in okay so first we started it in E now let's do it again but let's do it in G so we can actually do it on these low strings again teach you one more time close enough for country okay so just so you don't forget okay so again in G down this time it's because the G is here okay we know our G note from our G chord so we have to start at this G but we have to start one string above it okay and you can even do it in G open that open G one right there that I just did on two different strings that will teach you more than anything and again remember again I'm bending down now because I'm on the three lowest strings and so you get to bend down now you can do this Half a step. 
step. So, so you only play it once and I'll pull us. Until you hit the last notes, you know, so you can go. Okay, so there's a nice little lick that you'll use an awful lot and you might use it way up here. So you'll find all kinds of places to use it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you can use them way up high. Use them everywhere you can, but that's a great basic lick to play as an intro, getting into a song, to get out of it, or to end it. Um, a nice way to end it. Or, um, it would be the last chord that you would um, play in a progression like that. So if you're in G, you're going to be playing G, C, D. Okay, okay. Be doing like a do. show you how I'd end it with chords. You would end it like this. Okay, go to that last chord. And then you're done. Okay? Pretty neat. Now, if the band did that, and you just want to play lead behind that, but if you tell the band to go um, behind what you're doing, you tell them to go and end it, you only have to go back one fret, and then back up to the G. sharp note is part of the D chord. That one right there. Same as that one. Then G. So you just do a little bit of thinking, but whatever that last note is, then if you're going to end it that way, you can always just go back one and end it that way, and the band can go to G, D, G. Okay, and you just go back for the D and back here. Okay, so it's just a little bit of thinking, but pretty cool. Okay, so now let's go into a different one. Um, like I said, those intros, outros, turnarounds, and again, a turnaround is something in the middle of the song that you can play the same thing to make it familiar. Um, it's the same lick that you can use a couple times throughout the song. Um, so you just finish the chorus. Big city, turn me loose and set me free. Okay, so the song hasn't ended, but you play the same lick again. But that's just called a turnaround. It's just not really a whole solo. But you play just boom, dang, ba, dang, ba, dang, ba, dang, ba, dang, ba, dang, ba, dang, Okay, so just like the beginning, but that's the actual terminology for it is a turnaround. That way everybody you play with for the rest of your life, that you jam along with, they'll know what you're talking about when you say do a turnaround. That just means go from that G chord to that D chord, back to the G. So that's leaving out the whole C and all that for all the solos for later. Okay, so that's just a quickie, if you will, a quick solo. It's just a turn around from beginning to the last chord, right back to the first chord, so it's not a real long solo. So, it's not like you're trying to rush, <laughs> you know, the song or drag it out either way. It's just what it is. Okay, a very short variation of a solo that does exactly what you do at the beginning 
that's called a turnaround. Okay, now another part, let's just extend this uh, since there's only you know about 14 minutes left and get you up the neck some more with basically this same lick um, is to get you just up an octave or two higher. Okay, now let's do this whole thing exactly as done but an octave higher which means okay so now we have things sounding pretty cool um, and this is way different because of the way the strings are all laid out okay so I had you do it two different ways this is a third way and there is a fourth way so I'll get you through all four ways of doing this and then I'll just be done with this lesson then we'll continue the easy stuff later okay so let's get you all over the neck so you can play this everywhere let's do it in G that's where we left off okay next place I want to do it on is to do it on um, I want your G note to be on your B string so find your G note on your B string if you would for me real quick okay if you're not familiar how to do that you gotta get familiar <laughs> okay thing is we get to basically think of uh, when we're going to be doing stuff on your B string and I asked for it that's where your G is going to be anyway um, the only chord that you actually have a note in it that names that chord is your D chord because the note here on your B string that is your D note during your D chord now if you take that three those three notes and move it up two frets there's there's E move it up one more fret that's F F sharp G so that must mean still that same finger on the B string is a G note so everything that looks like a D chord is going to be able to be used so keep that in mind. It's very useful to know that everything that looks like a D chord surrounding that B string there is usable because you can hit all of those notes and we're going to. Okay, so we have to start here. Remember this? <laughs> so that's where we're going to start. Okay, so you're starting on the third string, fret seven. Hammer on to nine. See the dots? Now to eight on your B string. Back to nine on your third string. Now we gotta bend up. We're going from ten on your G string. I'm sorry, on your second string, your B string. Notice I'm using two fingers again to help me bend up. Get in there. Okay, so we have to bend up a whole step. All the way up to B. Now we use our pinky directly underneath again because we have moved beyond that B string and we could use the one underneath again but we can't bend down because there's not by the time it would actually get to where we need it it's already off the neck so we have to bend it up then because we're like this okay so that's back down to um, nine that's already pre-bent then just like you're used to doing already so ten bend it up 
then 10 on the E string, first string, then hit it on the B string again, release it or resolve it, pull off, then we have. Okay, this is where it gets weird because of the B string again. Okay, let's pan out just a little bit. So we have that note we know is G. So we have to do that. Now we have to go get back to this one because we know from being a D shape. Okay, because I told you to remember this shape. So now we have to get to that note. So we did. Now we know we have to, because of the way the guitar is tuned, it's messed up. We have to do this one, get to there. So now we got to get all the way back to this G here. So you're moving all over the guitar now. position for this okay I'm not gonna stay on it long don't have time don't have a long time to stay here same thing same goofy stuff but a new way to play it okay this is a great way to do it just like your a thing Okay, where you get to play it with one whole chord, like this. That's the same as playing this, down here. Same three notes, just like you're playing the D chord. But it's actually a G chord. Now we're playing an A up here at the 12th fret, the double dots. It looks like an A chord, but it's a G chord if you play all three strings. The D, G, and B string. Same as... Okay, so now we have where we can leave them here. I'm going to come back out of here a little bit. Okay. So now we're doing 12 to 14 with the hammer on. Then 12 on 3. Back to 14 on 4. Then bend it up on 14 on the 3. Now since we're on that string, we have to use our pinky at 15 here on the dot. Now release it. Now the... Now that same thing again. Then... Okay, so... Now we got to find that G... Um, 13, 12, 10. Okay. Okay. Now this gets really cool. Now once you get way up high like this, you can actually even... What's that? This is where we have fun. When you're way up high like this, you can actually use your pinky when you put it down. Right there when you hit that note, hit, cover your pinky across that high E string too. Hit them all. Adding in an extra note. show you that for a whole hour. Yeah, 
Isn't that cool? Okay, so very basic run, or fill, or lick, or whatever. So you have... Again, Scott Grove of GroovyMusicLessons.com. Um, I know it was one lick over and over and over again. But again, these are called intros and outros. Intros meaning beginnings. Outros meaning endings. And turnarounds mean very short solo in the middle that sounds exactly like your intros and your outros. Um, and you please get them in all the keys because you're going to need to get them in every key. Remember, women generally sing in E flat and B flat. So learn to play them in E flat and B flat because you're going to need them. If you ever back up a girl that sings crazy or anything, they're going to sing it in B flat every time. Okay, so once again, I, me, or you get to work on that, and I will do a lot more of this very, very beginner stuff that has been asked to me or of me by request. I'm more than happy to do these. And the Countryer the better. -er 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 -er. <laughs> okay, so again, right back to the roots, and um, we'll take it nice and easy on a lot of these. I'll do some of the advanced stuff for other people too, but for those who wanted the easy stuff, we have begun. Okay, talk to you soon, and click the link below the video, and um, you'll get some of those harder licks that are free on the website for free. And you can jump ahead if you want to and see what's coming up later. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.